This review is on the TI Automotive F9 um, This is what everyone calls a Wabro 465 or 450. Uh, it's the E85 version of the Wabro 400, which is actually the uh, part number ending in 262 pump that um, I'll link a I'll put the link to that review because I go a lot of the design and technology in that one. I'm not going to do all that in this one because it's all the same. Uh, this is just a more robust pump that they came out with uh, to make fully ethanol compatible. So this is the go-to pump for ethanol use E85. But there's also some uh, more robust features that I will talk about in uh, one downfall when running high power return fuel systems. So we'll go ahead and open this up. Alright, and there it is. It's got the laser etching with the barcode, the part number made in the USA TI Auto. You'll notice a few differences that we'll talk about here shortly. But it is still a DCS dual channel, two turbines in parallel, 39mm, 50mm body, just like a the other pump and I will just do a quick rundown with them side by side so you can see some of those difference so the metal housing is actually shorter on this one but overall the pump outlet is taller uh, there's like a second barb on the outlet it's still a 3 8 barb uh, it's just a little taller and they made it taller uh, to clear this different connector uh, that they put on here, which is annoying, but whatever. So it's got a Delphi connector already bonded on, so it doesn't just have the blades like the other one. So you either have to get the male version of the plug for installing or just cut this off and wire it up yourself. Which is fine, that's what I end up doing. So, <clears throat> and if you notice, it's uh, might be a little hard to tell, but the material is a little different. Um, I guess you could say it's not as shiny, but uh, it's corrosion resistant, fully corrosion resistant. It's a little bit of different color on the bottom. Uh, you will see. Uh, the I talked in the other video about knockoffs. Um, the knockoff of this is usually a darker gray. And that's a good telltale. So keep that in mind. All right, we'll get this one out of the way. Well, oh, there we go. All right, so specs on this. So, in addition to being fully ethanol compatible and rated for it and warrantied in it um, it has a little bit better performance uh, compared to the other pump so uh, that equates to basically a 10 psi gain in performance or five percent so uh, when they were first developing this pump before it came out it was rumored that it was going to flow 465 liters an hour uh, opposed to 400 which the previous one did however that later changed but for some reason that stuck so people still call this the Walboro 465 or whatever uh, it does not flow that and when it was finally released uh, the actual advertised flow rate was 450 so it's also referred to as a 450 um, or a 430 because that's what it actually flows at 40 psi which is like the standard for testing so and so we'll go over some flow rates real quick so at 40 psi 13.5 volts um, 430 liters per hour is what it flows so that's about a 5% gain in flow and that's throughout the board until the pressure relief hits in which um, uh, flow starts dropping off pretty hard 
So then we move on, it matches up with the old pump. So at 50 PSI, it flows 405 liters per hour, which is what uh, the other pump flows at 40. So uh, essentially it has a 10, PS higher, 10 PSI higher working pressure, if you want to look at it that way. And then at 60 PSI, this pump flows 380 liters per hour, um, which is what the other pump flowed at 50 if that makes sense. So everything shifted 10 PSI in the flow rates essentially. So a little bit better performance uh, at a higher pressure, which is usually what you're running when you, you got boost. So um, it does flow better and it is a more robust motor. Um, this pump motor is rated to 18.5 volts, whereas the other one's only 14. Although they use BAPs on both of them, this one will live much longer and, uh, you know, have a better longevity at a higher voltage. So you can run your race battery, your standard boost to pump or voltage booster to 18 volts or so. And this pump, this pump will be happy all day. So that's, uh, that's, uh, one of the better design benefits. The problem is, um, if you're running more than one of these, so if you're running one, you can still run one of these in return lists. Um, they'll support about 500 horsepower on E85 and about 650 on gas. But what you got to keep in mind is most guys are running that are running higher levels of ethanol have to go to return and have two or three pumps. And a lot of the newer cars are running four bar higher base pressures. And this is where I'm going to get to the drawback of this pump. It's pressure relief opens hard at around 80 PSI and which time flow drops off hard. So on the regular Walboro 400, uh, you know, the, the relief starts opening around 80, 90, and then you get a little trickle off flow does drop a little bit because it's relieving pressure and dumping fuel. But this one drops flow off hard. So it's a, it's a big bypass um, to protect it. So this is not ideal, although it flows better at that 10, you know, it's, it's got that 10 PSI increase of flow. If you hit that relief, you're going to quickly lose flow and you're going to lose pressure while you're operating your vehicle. And that's evident. Like I said, these, these pumps are great. So two of these in a return setup will do a thousand horsepower, but that's assuming a low base pressure and a an efficient boost level. You know, so you want to keep your base pressure around 40 PSI if you run this pump on ethanol with big power. And then, you know, I've seen two of them make a little over a thousand at around 20 something pounds of boost. A lot of the newer cars are running four bar or are running like 55, 58, uh, up to 60. I've seen a guy that's running a 60 PSI base pressure. That's what his tutor wanted. The higher your base pressure, the quicker you will max out these pumps and the hotter they're going to run and the sooner they're going to wear out. So yeah, I get it. Some, a lot of tuners for ethanol like to bump up base pressure to make your injectors work better. Uh, cause it's kind of like a, a give and take the higher your base pressure, the less you get out of your pump, but the more you get out of your injector. So <clears throat> the need for these bigger injectors guys often don't get big enough injectors or don't understand like, really how much injector you need with ethanol um because the less energy and the more volume you have to flow with the fuel um but anyway yeah so if you're running above a 40 psi base pressure i do not recommend running this pump in return if you're running big power you're going to run run the the pump that was re released after this um which is the part number is actually 274 and it's the high pressure version of this pump. So it's exactly the same. And I'm not going to do a different video of that because it's all the same. It just has a different pressure relief uh, spring in there. Excuse me. <coughs> Let's swig of this. All right. Uh, so instead of this one opening at 80, um, the high pressure 274 part number pump doesn't open until 100. So... If you're running like a 50, 45, if anything over 40 PSI base pressure and you're trying to get, you know, you're running around 20 pounds of boost, you're going to want the high pressure version. Don't even get this one. And the price isn't that much difference now. Um, 
you can find them for 15 to 20 bucks more per pump for the high pressure version which is not not nothing crazy and it's going to work better um because if you think about it the, the setups i see around 800 horsepower the guy was running 55 pound base pressure uh he's running like 20 22 pounds of boost so right there he's at 70 excuse me <coughs> Like 77, 78, plus you have line and filter losses, and those losses go up over time. And the more fuel you flow, because you're flowing more volume with ethanol, the more resistance you get from your lines and that stuff. Because you're actually, even though at you're at a similar power level, you're flowing 25 to 30% more fuel, so you get more pressure loss. And from what I've seen, after about a year of using your filter, there's a 10 pound loss. Um, and new, even a brand new clean filter, 10 micron, sees a couple pound loss. And 6 micron sees a couple pounds more than that. So, if we say he's at a 55 pound base pressure, and it's 22 pounds of boost, you know, at max boost, that's 77 pounds the, the pumps are putting out. It's almost at the pressure relief. Plus, you know, a couple pounds for line losses and filter losses, he's at 80. And that, that number is just going to degrade over time. And what was happening is he... Car was fine, everything was good, dad logs were good, and then at the track, under real load, going down, uh, that relief was opening, and we was lo losing pressure. And then it was coming back, because we would lose pressure and flow, get out of it, and um, then the pressure relief would close again, and pressure would build back up, and then it would open again. So, if you're running a higher base pressure, I'll emphasize this again, in a return setup with two or three of these pumps, and you're running big boost, big power, don't even get these ones. Go to the high pressure two two seven four version because it's got a hundred pound relief. It's gonna work out for you better. You don't have to worry about that. But um, I run these, but I I have a forty pound base pressure and I'm only around eight hundred horsepower and it's good. And I'm only I'm running less than twenty pounds of boost. So these work great for me. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, to recap, yep. A little more expensive, fully ethanol rated, warranted by, by TI Automotive or Walboro for this. Um, I talk about how TI Automotive is Walboro and they own that brand in my other video, which I'm going to link. But uh, a little more robust, operates better at higher voltage, and got a little bit better flow. Just uh, the downfall is that, that pressure relief, that safety mechanism. Alright, uh, any of these other new pumps y'all want to see? Uh, I can review. I have experience with most of them. And so, yeah, if uh, your car uses fuel or knows someone that does, check out SNH Performance. And again, comment, like, subscribe. It'd be awesome. I'm growing the channel, like I've mentioned. And if you comment something you want to see, what's fuel related, I'll do my best to uh, do a review or talk about it. All right, have a good one.